Welcome to Finding Certainty with your host and U.S. Army veteran, Patrick Lang. Over the next hour, you'll learn from Patrick and his expert guests how to attract more certainty into your business and your life. Now, here is your host, Patrick Lang. Welcome to Finding Certainty. If you're a new guest, we welcome you. On this show, we talk about how to find, not just find, but create more certainty in your life. If you're a returning listener, we appreciate your patronage. Really looking forward to the episode today. We're speaking with one of my dearest friends and really one of my heroes, Miss Jill McCauley. Thanks for being here, Jill. You're welcome. I'm pleased to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you share your story with uh, our listeners and for us to talk a little bit about what we're doing here at Certainty Management. For all of you who's listening, Jill is the uh, Director of Admin at Certainty Management. She's one of the senior partners with the uh, professional services organization that we, uh, we run. And uh, we're doing some neat things. And one of the programs that we're going to be talking about today, we're very excited about. If there's anyone out there who has a college student, has a prospective college student, you know a college student or someone who wants to go to college or trade school or something, today we're going to be talking, among other things, about how they can do so without having to graduate with student loans. We, our goal is to help thousands, if not millions of college students to graduate 100% debt free. And that is going to be one of the topics we talk about today with Miss McCauley. So, all right. So you're, you're ready to go, Jill, strap on uh, your seatbelt. Uh, let's rock and roll. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm grateful to be here. Um, it was kind of a surprise, but a, a good surprise. And, uh, you know, it was a little late last night that Patrick invited me to tell you all the truth. And I did lose a little sleep over it, but I think it's going to be fun and a really good opportunity to get outside my comfort zone, which is um, some things I'm trying to work on. Well, I really appreciate it, especially last minute. You know, I tell my uh, team members, and we have some really phenomenal people making up our team here at Certainty, and Jill is one of those. I refer to Victoria Foster as my right hand, and Jill is my left hand, and uh, they do everything for me and with me. And and uh, I interviewed Victoria several months ago. She was one of the very first interviews I did where we told the story of certainty management, how she came into the picture, how the company started. And I've been wanting to interview Jill ever since, but I've told her, let me let me wait and, put, and bring you in if I have a cancellation last minute because, because uh, that happens sometimes. My guest who was supposed to be on today is stuck in Dubai and couldn't get a flight. And he said, I, I apologize, I need to reschedule. So. So lucky for us, that created a late night opening and Jill was gracious enough to uh, jump in short notice. So I'm excited, it's perfect timing. It's perfect for us to talk about what we're doing with uh, the new Certainty Fellowship and, and so forth. So, all right, I'm excited. But um, so Jill, why don't we start by you telling a little bit about your story. Where'd you grow up and uh, what brought you to today? Because if y'all don't know, Jill is, uh, as I said, our director of admin. She does a lot to help me out. She's my executive assistant and has since become a partner in the company. She earned that role. And, um, and yet she has overcome some trials and obstacles in her life that just blow my mind. And she's very inspiring to us and our team and anyone who knows her. And I know you don't like all the accolades and the you know, being in the spotlight, but I think your story is really important because it is inspiring. And there are those out there who are struggling with trials and challenges. And, and I think when they see you and others like you who are overcoming your challenges and thriving despite them, it's a story that deserves to be told. So tell us a little bit about just your growing up years and where you, where you uh, are today and how you got there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Um, I grew up and still live in Woodenville, Washington, which is about 20 minutes northeast of Seattle. And it's kind of a smaller community. There's lots of trees, as most people know about the Pacific Northwest, and rain, but it's also just extremely beautiful. And uh, lots of places to build forts and play outside with friends. And it's pretty, 
uh, ideal place to grow up as a kid, very safe. And um, yeah, just my family lived here since we moved here from Southern California when I was just a baby. And I still live in the same house today, actually, that we moved here to, which is kind of unique. As Patrick was sharing, he's moved like 20 times in his life, but um, I'm on the opposite end. But I really can't imagine at this point living anywhere else. Uh, I grew up riding horses a lot of my life from eight to 18, lots of competitive horseback riding. And I played basketball and soccer, was very active. Sports was big in our house. Older siblings who played football and baseball and lots of surfing. And so um, that is kind of the house that I grew up in. I have two amazing parents and uh, five brothers and one sister. So big family. Well, if I can interject, uh, you're also a singer. And yeah. if you ever hear Jill sing or recordings of her singing, she's incredible. I mean, you could have been a professional singer, I think, up until your accident, which I'm sure you're going to tell us about. And it just breaks my heart, Jill, because you're so talented. I look forward to the day where you are belting out your uh, probably your own uh, pieces that you've written and performed, but uh, th I know that day will come, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I love music. I did a lot of singing and was even a vocal performance major my first year of college. And I, after I graduated from high school, I went to a small college, BYU Idaho in Southeastern Idaho. It's very cold and very windy there, but it was a really a fantastic year. I lived with some amazing women who are really the, my best friends today. And it was a fantastic experience. Um, it was, I guess, I think a lot of people experience this when you leave home and you move away, you learn a lot about yourself. And I certainly did. I learned a lot about independence and was just feeling really excited for the future. And, um, but as the year ended, I started to drive home and I was on my way to Boise, Idaho, which was about four hours away where my mom was going to fly into the airport there and meet me. And we were going to drive back to Seattle together. But I never made it that far because in the middle of the afternoon, I fell asleep while I was driving and um, my car rolled several times end over end. And it, um, I suffered a severe spinal cord injury, breaking my neck between the C4 and C5 vertebra, which is pretty high and left me a quadriplegic. So I can't use my arms and my legs and I don't have feeling below my collarbone. And that was the beginning of a whole new life. And I had a lot of learning to do about how to live life in a wheelchair. I was in the hospital for several months in um, physical rehab where they were teaching me how to drive a wheelchair and how to direct my care, which I require a lot of care and assistance. And then, you know, that just kind of started me on the best path to um, be successful. There were really helpful and well-educated people at the hospital and therapists, and they really set me up for um, really, really a, a great life that I've entered into. It's very different from what I planned for my future which I think was maybe more than my injury itself, uh, maybe the hardest part, just having a plan that you expect for your life to happen, you know, marriage and children or whatever that plan is for people that you just kind of picture that. And so when that didn't happen, it was, it was really um, difficult and to come up with a whole new, a whole new paradigm of belief about who you are and what you want to do and how you want to exist in the world. And um, that has been a 23 year journey for me. And I'm still learning every day. Well, uh, as I said before, uh, Jill is, she's a hero to all of us who know her. She's so inspiring because she is, and I want to talk a little bit about this, but she is that person who always lifts others around you. You know, she, uh, I'm saying her, but you are, are such a great example of that. You're always 
and, and I know sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. And I know you don't, you have good days and bad days. And some days you don't feel like <laughs> lifting anybody else up. You just want to curl up in a ball and stay in bed, but you're so good at, at doing exactly that, at being a light and being positive and encouraging others. And I believe there's a principle in there that many of us can learn from because it's easy for us to get lost in ourselves and our trials and our challenges. And yet one of the very best ways to feel better when we're depressed or discouraged is to look outward and serve others. And that's been your whole life, you know, long before your accident, but ever since then, I think, and yet I know you've gone through peaks and valleys and highs and lows. Um, I want to, I just want to say one, one thing I was talking to Frank yesterday, my business partner, uh, at certainty global, and he, and I, and I told him I, I was, I did the exact same thing as you, Jill. I don't know if you've heard this story, but I rolled a car when I was 16. I only had my license about four months or so. Middle of the afternoon, stayed up too late the night before and rolled my car three times across the freeway when I fell asleep. And I said, I could have been in the, the exact same situation as Jill. And I told him it's probably because I, the Lord needed, I knew I needed to repent a lot more and needed a lot more work. And I wouldn't have been able to handle <laughs> what you're going through. But, but isn't it incredible how one experience in your life can change the whole trajectory of your life? You know, and we go along, we have these plans. We have this idea of what our life is going to be. But so often the Lord has a different plan in mind. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, definitely. And I think I've learned a lot about gratitude. I always say please and thank you because of the help that I receive, you know, I, um, yeah, I always try to try to put a smile on my face, but also be honest at the same time. For a long time, I felt pressure that I needed to, I don't know, I don't know why, but just be, I don't know, just try and show others that I was doing okay and that I was making it. But really I've discovered that honesty and um, being genuine is, means a lot. And people are actually, kind of relieved to know that that my experience is difficult and then we can have an honest conversation about maybe what they're experiencing or what's difficult for them and we can actually meet each other on the same level because having difficulties and trials in life is a very common experience but from the gratitude that I try and live my life like a um, just a disposition really that uh, the charity I found comes from that and reaching out to others and being um, of service to somebody else. It just is like a natural outflow of um, gratitude and feeling genuine gratitude. And I, I, th I think that's what we're working on, I think in our company, you know, being a servant centered company and helping others. And I think we do that with, you know, all the things that we have to offer. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, we have a favorite speaker uh, from church and um, he talks about how he gave a, a talk once, um, a seminar, kind of a fireside type thing that I've always remembered. And he said that, he said, if we can learn to not just get through our trials, but literally be grateful for them. And he even went on so far as to say, if you're fortunate enough to deal with chronic pain, right? Which sounds so backwards, right? You know, you'd be grateful or you're, you consider yourself lucky to have chronic pain. And yet he was talking about how we can use this in our lives to become what he calls spiritually centered versus temporally centered, right? And I'll, I'll tell you the difference. You know, you get up, you stub your toe, you know, you might swear, shake your fist, you know, and then the, your whole day goes bad, right? You spill toothpaste on your shirt, you're late for work, you're you know, and it all starts with this, with this experience where you felt pain and you just deal with it temporarily, you get frustrated or angry or whatever. What he says, and this is getting into some, maybe some spiritual commentary, but that's okay. He says, if you use that experience to an instantly picture in your mind, Jesus Christ and his suffering and say, this is your chance to have a glimpse of what he felt, you know, a billion times over to infinity. If you can do that when you feel pain or you feel loss or frustration, then it gives you the opportunity to 
gain that glimpse and gain an understanding of what he did for us. And in the process, you can gain greater spiritual depth and appreciation. And he said, if you can just do that one thing, it'll change everything else in your life. I just love that, right? Isn't that, I mean, isn't that a powerful statement? It is, yeah. And not every person, maybe not everyone listening is a person of faith, but, you know, just there are principles there that anyone can apply. And, you know, we're going to talk about more stuff too. So if you're not a person of faith, don't turn us off. <laughs> so you've got some other stuff that's really exciting to share. That's right. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. There are eternal principles, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Jewish, you know, whether you are a person of faith or not, it's a principle of perspective, I think. You know, we hear about glass half full, glass half empty. It's hard to overflow and to a point where you can serve others if your glass is always half empty. You know, if you're constantly looking at, um, you know, what, what, what's the good in this? What can I learn from this? How can I uh, serve others while I'm going through this? How can I not just get through and survive, but how can I thrive? Those are really important questions. And if we can ask them and ask them honestly, as you said, be honest with how we feel, then amazing things can happen. I, I read a book years ago about emotional intelligence, and it, and it talked about how one of the most important things we can do is to be open and honest. Don't try to, don't try to uh, I know we talk about faking it until we make it. And, got to put on a smiling face sometimes for others because you don't want to bring them down but but integrity and authenticity is so much more i think effective and and impactful sorry i'm doing all the talking but what are your thoughts on that joe yeah i've definitely discovered that that's true in my life that people you people can tell you know whether you are actually being genuine or whether there's something there that you're um, a, a mask that you're putting up up front and uh, people appreciate it, especially in, in a service to others. You know, they, they know you can see someone on a video and you can tell if they're trying to sell you something or if they actually believe in the product that they're talking about. Right, or the principle or the philosophy mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Yes. We're coming up on our first break already. I told you this goes by fast, but... Um... Any last thoughts on that? Anything uh, you'd, you'd share in the last 60 seconds that's helped you as you've gone through your trial to get to where you are? Mm-hmm. Yes, just recognizing how much um, being interdependent, I think, is we talk about being dependent and then transition to independence and then to interdependence. And I think that is a hallmark of a healthy life. If you can exist in a community and support each other and help each other, whether that's your family or whether that's your work family, that interdependence and being uh, having good relationships is really um, a hallmark to a successful life. I agree. It's a hallmark of a successful uh, business or marriage or anything, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to go to a break, everyone, uh, real quickly here. Uh, we're visiting with Jill McCauley of Certainty Management. When we come back, we're going to get into how you uh, met Certainty and how you transitioned to the company and then get into a little bit of what we're doing to uh, do exactly what you're talking about and make a difference out there in as many lives as we can. So thanks for listening. Thanks, Jill. We will be right back. Okay, perfect. All clear. Back in two. Thank you, Matt. Are you hearing the, the feedback, Jill, or is it Okay. No, I don't hear any. Mm-mm. Good. I think it's mostly in my headphones, but it's funny because people talk about being nervous about being on the show and you're talking about you didn't get much sleep last night, but it's just, it's so like laid back. It's just a conversation it's, and it goes by so fast. I always think a whole, how are we going to fill a whole hour, but before you know it, it's over. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, classic me is like writing every single word. You know, that's how my talks are. You like prepare every but I've been really trying to move away from that and just, just like, okay, just if you prepare, you shall not fear, you know, you're going right. to be in the words in the moment that you need them. Right. And um, I, the more I do that and trust in that, the more I can see that it actually works. That's so true. You know, I've for many years been a sales trainer and manager and, and, you know, you go to our meetings every week and 
I rarely go in with an agenda or an outline. Mm -hmm. I used to do sales meetings every week for you know, 30 or 40 salespeople in a room, you know, in front of them. And I had an outline. I always started with some music and a positive and then some housekeeping and then some training and then kind of a, a challenge or something. So I kind of had a general outline, but I never went in. At first I did, but eventually I realized if I went in with no agenda and no notes, no plan, it was given to me what to say, right? And, you know, as they say, and it should be given you in the very moment what you should say. It's talking about the gospel and sharing the gospel or whatever, but I think it applies in a lot of areas. And if, you know, for a long time, I used to set you know, like um, New Year's resolutions. And I finally just started setting one resolution each year, and that was to listen to every prompting. Mm -hmm. Because when I do that, everything else goes well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good adjustment. That's a whole nother level. <laughs> that's relying on something other than your own plans. Yeah. Um, Coming back in about 15 seconds. OK, thanks, Matt. Here we go. America Business Network. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Welcome back to Finding Certainty. We're visiting with Jill McCauley. She's a senior partner with Certainty Management. Uh, we're a profit consulting firm, a professional services organization that's focused on helping customers improve their profitability. Now, the way you came to Certainty was fairly unique. And not everybody knows this story about how you and I met and how we know each other. Do you want to... Uh, Tell that uh, real quick to the audience. Oh, yeah, sure. It is interesting. M uh, Patrick's father, John, and my father, Howard, grew up together in Southern California just as kids. And they knew each other there and spent a lot of time together, actually, their families. And um, then just really had, didn't talk for many, many years, decades. And we happened to be on vacation in Utah where John and Sue, Patrick's parents, live. And John, who knows everybody and remembers every name. And um, he loves to stay in contact with friends, even from decades past. He called my dad to catch up. And we were if you, within a half an hour from him. And so we were able to go by in person and sit in their living room and meet them face to face and talk with them and really catch up and get to know them. I'd never met them before. And um, it was kind of surprising because Patrick's father is also in a wheelchair. He's a paraplegic. And so we had a lot of shared experiences and we're able to um, yeah, share stories and tips and tricks that we've learned in our time in a, in a chair. And uh, it was really a unique experience. But um, he told me, he said, are you looking for a job? You know, our son Patrick is developing a company and putting it together and they're looking for people to join their team. And I had really had not worked since my accident except for a couple of small jobs and I just recognized the opportunity I'd been thinking about uh, that maybe I needed a mentor in my life I'd made a list in my phone of people who I thought would be good who could help me maybe figure out what I wanted to do as far as business or a job and I hadn't called any of them yet but I was definitely thinking about like moving to a next step where I could do something to give back or be a part of, um, be a part of something. And so it was pretty interesting and timely, which is how I believe God works. You have to be careful what you think or what you say out loud, or even more what you pray for, because, you know, he's always listening. <laughs> and um, it was, so it was a very, um, yeah, just a testament that, that, uh, yeah, he, he cares what we, what we care about. So I, 
met Patrick over Zoom and kind of the rest is history. And I've been very grateful to be a part of this. Well, we've been grateful to you and grateful that we're, our paths cross. We are grateful to both our dads for making that happen. And uh, it's interesting when you, you meet certain people in your life and in your career that you just know you are supposed to meet, right? When you meet, it's like kindred spirits or, you know, you're, uh, you're a doppelganger or something like that. I mean, but the, the minute Jill and I started talking, we felt like we uh, we had known each other for years. Like she was a little sister I'd always uh, wanted. Nothing against my own sister, but you know, she we just instantly hit it off, and and very quickly realized, you know, we need to work together. And we started talking about what how we could do that. Uh, I said I've been looking for an executive assistant. I think uh, you could do that. And she you know, and part of your your. Um, I think trepidation, if there was any, is that you hadn't had a lot of work experience. You'd done a lot of service and you'd done some things to help your dad's business and so forth and so on. But you were, I remember you saying, well, I don't know exactly what I can bring to the table, <laughs> right? And, and yet, I think, and you talk about mentors, you know, I think oftentimes we need someone from outside of us who's a little bit further away to look at us and say, you got this, right? You have this you have more to offer than you realize. And I definitely feel that way. I mean, immediately, just your, how articulate you are and your, your energy level and so forth and so on, Jill. So, um, you know, I know, I know coming to work with certainty has been a real blessing in your life. Uh, you're very patient with me and, and with the, <laughs> the affiliates and so forth. I know we love you for that. But uh, any comments on just how the transition has been from where you were to where you are today, because it's been, it's only been two, a couple of years now. And yet it feels like we've known each other forever. And I can't even imagine certainty management without you. Yeah, I, I didn't because of my really lack of uh, work experience. You know, my resume is basically blank, except for scooping poop in the barns where I rode. But um, <laughs> I did, I did learn to work hard. And my dad is an extremely hard worker. So I had good examples there. But I've, yeah, just been uh, learning a lot about business. I didn't realize what what power comes from working and um, growing and developing in some in a capacity that may be a little bit outside your comfort zone. And so that has been really great. You know, I've developed skills. I've learned that I have certain skills that I didn't know I had. And I think all of that together has really changed my life. I mean, I, it's only been like less than three years, but I think back to where I was before that and before this opportunity. And it really feels like a whole completely new me. I was speaking with a friend the other day and she said, you carry yourself differently. You speak differently. You, you know, what you're involved in is completely different. I mean, there's no way I would have been on a radio show or even too, as I've been interviewed twice this week before, you know, before becoming part of this company. And it's really, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty miraculous, actually. Oh, well, speaking of your other interview and uh, of mentors in general, Frank Hellring, who, uh, he's the reason I became a radio show host, as you recall, I, I was invited to be a guest on his show to talk about what we were doing, talk about my new book. Um, Mission Matters, et cetera. And uh, he ended up inviting me to meet with the general manager at Voice America and ended up doing so. And it led to me having this show here at Finding Certainty. And I consider Frank to be a mentor of mine. And he's constantly making me stretch, right? Yeah, we have different strengths and, and weaknesses. And so I'm really good at certain things and he's really good at certain things and together we're better than we ever would be alone. And I see the same thing with you and me, Jill. You know, you have strengths I don't have, vice versa, but it's like one plus one equals 11, right? <laughs> Not just one plus one equals two. So anyway, um, we really appreciate you and, and I'm so glad, grateful that you joined our team and everything you contribute and all your hours, even getting up early this morning, earlier than you normally do. Your dad, thanks to Howard for helping you because your caregiver isn't even there yet. So anyway, let's, 
let's move on. But um, as you talked about coming to work with certainty, we talked about mentors helping us and so forth. It's really about empowering each other, right? It's about empowering that person that you're a mentor to or that you're being mentored by and, and empowering each other to achieve more and to achieve your potential. And I, I love that concept because it's really at the essence of what certainty management is all about, right? Um, do you mind just sharing in 60 seconds a, a, a kind of a big picture, 10,000 foot view of what certainty management does? Mm -hmm. Yes, we started out as a um, cost reduction company. And we had one service that we provided through our um, vendor partner. We're, we're an authorized affiliate for them. And we did that really well. They, we tell people about them and they provide the service and they do really an excellent, excellent job. But we saw more needs really that were there were out there in the world and a lot of areas in business and personal lives that we could you know, we could also meet along with this original service. And so we became really a profitability company. We help individuals and businesses become more profitable and have more certainty in their lives. And so we developed our portfolio and added more things on, more vendor partners. And as we've done that, we've really seen a lot of lives impacted and um, even more potentially as we go forward. Yeah, you know, as um... As we've continued to grow and continue to add services and products, as Jill said, we started with our one service. It was a, it was a um, cost reduction service. We still do that helps companies reduce their printer and copier contract costs. And it's a multi-billion dollar arena. Most customers are paying a lot more than they have to. And we know how to come in and cut their bill in half in most cases. So we can help customers save 30 to 60% on average on their existing printer, copier, lease contracts. But as Jill said, we, we realized that there were other ways we could help customers too. We could put, help them put money back in their pockets in several different ways, not just in this one arena. And as we've continued to grow, we, I mean, we, we get offered opportunities and products and services almost on a weekly basis. Uh, we have to turn down a lot more than we accept but we've been very selective, but now we have this full suite of services that can really bless a company, a small, medium, large, and help them make more, help them keep more, we, and we do encourage them to give more. Now, two of the programs we do, and I know, it, I know that you know what these are, Jill, but two of them is really about giving back. Uh, they're, they're really about doing more than just making income, but making a difference in our customers' lives, in the communities in which we reside. Do you mind talking briefly about the Certainty Partners Program, and then maybe I'll get into the Certainty Fellowship, because those are the two, if I, had to get, if I had to do away with everything else, I'd do away with everything and keep these two, because <laughs> they're the ones I'm most, most excited about. Yeah, the development of our Certainty Partners Program is ongoing, but we are so excited about it because of the potential there is to really impact a lot of people. We we're trying to get into businesses and get people's CEO's ear and, and have people hear about what we do. And we realized that as Patrick said, we could do more than make an in income with those services that we could make a difference in people's lives if we talk to nonprofits. And so we can use these same services that we use for regular businesses to also um, do cost reduction work or profitability work for a nonprofit specifically or anyone that they recommend or refer to us. And then we give half of whatever we make from their referral or their nonprofit back to the original nonprofit so that we could both benefit. And there's so many really incredible nonprofits that we all know about. And I think a lot of people want to give back. They know that it's a good thing to do and businesses sometimes are even required to donate to nonprofits, but it's kind of a, an old model to just call it for a nonprofit to call and ask for people to donate money, which was especially challenging during COVID or during times like now when the economy is 
um, costing more and costs are rising and interest rates are rising. And so they want to, they want to do good, but they're not quite sure how. And so we've developed a model that, and a really incredible one and a way that we can benefit them and, and show them, you know, kind of a new, a new way to do fundraising. Yeah. You know, um, we all know this, but the number one need that most nonprofits have is for more funding. The more funding they have, the more good they can do. And our model works in a way that it creates funding or frees up dollars in a company's budget that doesn't cost them anything out of pocket. Um, so many times nonprofits are dealing with even burnout of trying to get donations and having to ask the same people over and over and over again. And it's kind of a one-way road because they're asking and they have their hand out and they're asking for help. And it's exhausting. There are many people in nonprofit fundraising work who have gotten burned out by it. Our model, and we refer to it as the Certainty Partners Program because we're, we're working in partnership with companies and the nonprofits to make truly win-win scenario. But it is a way for the nonprofits to create a, more of a reciprocal relationship where it goes both ways. They introduce us to their network. We come in and do the work. We free up potentially millions of dollars for these companies. And then as Jill said, we donate a portion of it back to the nonprofits. And we encourage the clients to match our donation or even give more if they'd like. And it's a way for us to literally raise unlimited zero cost funding for these nonprofits. Jill, if I may, I'm, I've been wanting to ask you this question, but what is your favorite part of that program? I know you have a lot of them, but <laughs> What's your faith? Yeah, like I said, there are so many people doing good, lots of nonprofits. And so choosing, uh, like maybe we considered starting a nonprofit. You know, we have passions ourselves um, for areas that we want to affect change. And so instead of having to choose one thing to focus on as a company, we can actually benefit a lot of good that's already being done and just amplify, amplify their efforts instead of focusing on just one ourselves. That's absolutely right, 100%. We realize we could do what we're good at and create a ripple effect of change and of impact that can bless the lives of you know, potentially hundreds of organizations and millions of people. And so that is the uh, Certainty Partners program that we are very proud of and um, we're excited about what it's starting to do for organizations and Got uh, some favorites like Operation Underground Railroad, who's working to combat uh, child slavery and sex trafficking. If you if you haven't heard of them, we encourage you to go to our.org and go see the new movie that's coming out on July 4th called Sound of Freedom. It tells the story of Tim Ballard and his decision to leave his federal job to go and start Operation Underground Railroad and uh, the leads being played by Jim Caviezel. It looks absolutely incredible. I know you're a big fan, Jill. Huge fan, yes. All right, we're up against our next and last break, but thanks for listening. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, when we come back, we're gonna tell you about the second program we have that is also poised to empower not just nonprofits, but the rising generation. We're gonna help uh, millions of students in the process and we'll tell you about it as soon as we come back thanks for listening all right good segment all clear back in two all right thanks matt mm -hmm. almost done jilly bean oh, we're doing good <laughs> you're doing great and you look beautiful as always Thank you i always think i should wear some lipstick because it always looks so good on you or you know Everybody. There's a zoom, there's a zoom filter, you know, we could, we could work that. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with what I have probably won't be better. Although I do, hair, you, can, I you can have a mustache, you can have uh, eyeshadow, eyebrows. Okay. All right, there you eyebrows. go. <laughs> I probably need a little bit of color. I'm still recovering and looking right. a little peaked. My wife, my mom says I look like I've lost some weight. I need to get a battery for my scale so I can see just how much, but 
<laughs> that's not a bad thing to, <laughs> to lose some weight. Maybe um, the only good okay. thing, the only good thing that came out of that situation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this is a great, great segment. It's fun telling some of our story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Can you believe we've been doing this for three years together? I no. mean, it's hard to believe. I, I, I keep thinking it's only been two, but it's actually been three. And um, and it feels like we've known each other forever. I remember when we met in San Diego for the first time in person and we we talked a thousand times on Zoom, but it just felt like, isn't it interesting too? We meet a lot of people, like when we had our retreat in Las Vegas and people came who we'd never met in person, right? Liz and Woody and all these different people who, uh, all you've known them by is through Zoom. And when you meet in person, it's just, it's crazy because you feel like you've known them forever. Yeah, that was really awesome. Look forward to the next work, you know, retreat or cruise or European vacation we decide to go. <laughs> That's right. Have you ever been to Europe? No, never have. We need to get you there. I think we should definitely plan our next one in Italy or something. I drove down the Las Vegas Strip, went by the Eiffel Tower. That's as close as I've been. There you go. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, coming back in 10. Here we go. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Welcome back to Finding Certainty. Thanks for hanging with us for this long. Hopefully you're enjoying the chat with uh, Jill McCauley, my uh, right hand, left hand uh, executive head cook and bottle washer i mean you are everything here jill and we we just wouldn't be lost without you so uh thanks again for being on the show today um if you just joined us we were just talking about what we call our certainty partners program and this is our program through which we help nonprofits to raise unlimited zero cost funding so if you're listening and you know a nonprofit or are part of one a church a school a foundation that's in need of funding, which most of them are, tell them to re reach out to us and we would be happy to show them how we can help. We charge our nonprofits zero dollars for this help and it can create a perpetual growing major gift foundation or endowment for them. So let's talk about the next program though before we run out of time here, Joe, because I know you're very excited about this. I'm very excited about it. And there's a lot of buzz starting to happen surrounding our certainty fellowship. So um, let me give the, a little bit of background on it, if I may. We were invited to come out and speak at a big CEO summit at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia last October. And while we were there, we one of the presentations we did, we were talking about the employee retention tax credit work that we do, where we help companies to recover this ERC tax credit up to $26,000 per W-2 employee. And uh, we were sharing it with the, these kids from the, the School of Business there at Liberty. And they got so excited about the idea of being able to help businesses they know and tell you know family and friends and their pastor at their church and so forth and so on about this tax credit where billions of dollars are available to uh, to those organizations who just apply for it, it's a, it's a free payroll tax refund. And out of that evolved this conversation that has continued. And I want to do a shout out to Elijah Alexander. He's our liaison at Liberty University. He's just this young college student, junior. Uh, he's junior in college, and he's been very instrumental in helping us spearhead this thing and put it together and and so forth. So. Out of that evolved this idea that we had, that we could use what we're good at, not just to bless our customers, not just to even start helping nonprofits, but we could use it to help college students graduate 100% debt-free. 
without impacting their school schedules, a little bit of coaching and mentorship, but we could help them graduate debt-free. Why do you think that is so popular, Jill? I mean, why, maybe it's a stupid question, but why do you think the feedback we're getting is so positive? Because of the need, just how many college students are graduating with so much debt. And it's seemingly unavoidable in some cases, you know, that which is needed sometimes, but when they're just starting, you know, at the very beginning of, still at the beginning of their life with a lot of excitement about getting this college degree, but feeling very overwhelmed by the amount of debt they've had to incur. And whether that's loans or uh, other forms of, of debt. And in some cases, doctors, et cetera, you know, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars, which when you're just starting out, it feels like you're already losing before you even get going. Yeah, it's really um, staggering. I mean, the st statistics are pretty incredible. There's over $1.8 trillion in student loan debt in America. I mean, trillion, that is incredible. Uh, I read recently the average a bachelor student graduates with about $37,000 in debt. Uh, the average MBA, 85,000, PhD, over 125,000. And we know many students come out with much more than that because they're also paying for housing and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you're, you hit the nail on the head when you said uh, the need because there's this kind of black cloud that's hanging over so many college students. They're, they're trying to create a future. They're excited about what it could bring, wanting to change their life, maybe the life of their loved ones at the same time. But there's this, this trepidation and this worry. One, I'm going into debt. I don't even know if I'm going to get a job yet, right? And then when they do graduate, they have many times tens of thousands of dollars of debt hanging over their head. Our friend Eli at Liberty University says the most common word he hears is crippling student loan debt. And that's a pretty poignant word, right? I mean, I know that it's for you, right? And um, so you wanna explain maybe just briefly how the program works? Sure, yeah, we, we're starting with this, a few students here at Liberty University and I'm just sharing it with any college student that we know in our circle. And the way that we do it is we teach them about our services enough to be able for them to explain to businesses, either in their own circle and their own, own warm market or um, any businesses that they walk into and tell about it. And then we've created some information that they can share with that business owner. And if they choose to use our services, then we provide um, a, a fee and not a fee, but they, the college student then gets rewarded, you know, monetarily for the connection that they've made. Exactly. Now there's a couple of pieces to it that I think are important to mention. And one is that a college student is already busy, right? They have maybe 18 credits or working a part-time job. Maybe they're, 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 they're busy, right? And trying to keep their grades up and so forth and so on. Add to that if they're an athlete or something as well, or have extracurricular activities. I mean, my son's a diver, my daughter's a gymnast. Um, they're very, very busy. So this has to be something that they can fit in around a busy schedule. And, and ultimately it comes down to just making an, an introduction. And it's as simple as them sending a link with a video. And we'll put the link in the, the description to this, this uh, episode. But it's a it's as it's, it's easy as that. If a student can send a link to someone and encourage them to um, to just watch it and then follow up and see if they had any questions and if they have an interest, and if they do, they schedule an appointment with us. And that's it. Those three steps: send a link, follow up, schedule an appointment. If a kid can do that, a student can do that. Whether they're a prospective student going to college or to trade school or something, or they're a current student trying to fit it in around their, around their schedule. We can literally do the rest. And just like our certainty partners program, we give the lion's share of the earnings to the student or to the, just like we do to the nonprofits. 
we're, this is as much as this is a win-win, it is a way for us to meet new customers and uh, it, it, it benefits all of us, right? The companies, our company, our team, and the students. It is really about trying to empower these kids and help them to help others and to share with other students and to really put a dent in the universe. Any other thoughts on it, Jill, before we uh, wrap this up? We're about at the end of our show here. Yeah, and I think at the same time as they're earning some money, they're also learning very valuable, almost internship type business skills, which they, you know, maybe they'll discover a passion for business or some, some um, industry that they didn't know that they were interested in before. And it might even affect the way that they go through college or what classes they take. And so it's an early education that um, will allow them to make some decisions. Lots of people graduate from with a degree and they either never use it or they don't know what to apply it to, but this actually um, gives them some real life education. It does. And it, it, it does even more than that. And I couldn't, couldn't agree more, but not only does it give them, give them experience and the skills, but it opens up doors to them, to relationships, to connections, to opportunities, you know, there may be some of our students who want to stay on and work with us, and we'd be thrilled to see them do that, right? So it's us being able to groom and, and vet and, and, and kind of beta test or gauge prospective employees for our firm. Um, I think some students out there, they, and some young, young, young people, they don't want to go to school. They want to start their own business. They could do the same thing with us. They could work in the Certainty Fellowship and develop and earn the funds they need to start their own business. So whatever it is they want to accomplish, we want to empower them and strengthen them and enable them to do so. You know, some kids, they want to get out of college, go take a gap year and go tour Europe or somewhere. And we were just talking about that. I mean, it's, it's a whole other world. That's their goal. We want to help them get there. Maybe they want to transition to a career and they just need some money to do so. I've said many times that our, our certainty fellowship students literally have the opportunity to not just graduate debt free, but with money in the bank to launch their lives. I mean, imagine graduating from college with no debt and a paid off house. <laughs> I mean, talk about kickstarting your life. And that is possible here if you really get after it. We're about out of time, Jill. Any last uh, thoughts you want to share with uh, the listening audience? Well, I'm excited. I told my nephew about this. He's a student at the University of Washington. Shout out to Rowan. And I, I hope he'll take a look at it and some other students that I'm going to share this with as well. But I'm just glad to be here today. Glad to be a part of this company to provide more certainty to people because there really is a lot of uncertainty in the world right now in many, many ways. And our services and vendor partners are doing a really great job of, of um, fighting that. Absolutely. You know, whether you're a college student looking to get ahead and get out of school without that crippling debt hanging over you, whether you're a business who's looking for ways to uh, lower your costs, give more to your, your employees, maybe you want to add benefits so that they can actually afford, or, or maybe you want to uh, take a vacation, pay less for it. We have a wholesale travel division that can help. Uh, one of the programs we're most excited about is called Transact Card. It's a new banking ecosystem. You can see on some of the other interviews, we've interviewed the founders, the uh, executive team at Transact Card. It's one more way to empower the students, our customers, and also it's a phenomenal fundraiser for nonprofits. All of it ultimately comes down, guys. And I know this whole episode today has been a little bit of a... Uh, a pitch about certainty management, but ultimately it comes down to working together to empower and strengthen our communities. And we're not doing it by ourselves. We have some phenomenal associates and affiliates. We have some extraordinary vendor partners and we are very pleased and very honored to be a part of it all. Jill, really appreciate you. You know, I'd be lost without you. Um, I tell everyone there's Four women I love in my life. Six, if you count my two daughters. <laughs> but you're definitely in those top six with my mom and my sister and my wife. And really appreciate you. So um, 
we're out of time. Want to send us off with anything else? Uh, we've got 60 more seconds. No, great. Just go out and do good in the world, wherever you are, increase your circle of influence and, you know, just express gratitude and um, yeah, be grateful for every day. 100%. There is certainty out there to be had. You can create it, you can find it, you can develop it in your life and in the lives of those around you. We can help. We'd be honored to do so. Thanks for listening and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. All right. Excellent job today. Good show. All clear. Thank you, Matt. Yep. All right. You both have a great weekend. Thank you as you. well. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well, we're still recording, Jill. Did I forget anything? I don't think so. No, that was pretty good. Yeah, we did all right, I think. You did a great job. No reason to, no reason to be nervous. You're a natural in front of the camera. It is fun. I'm excited. I, I, uh, yeah, like I said, you have to be careful what you pray for because God is listening and I want to be able to speak, you know, just even in my own thoughts, talking about speaking on to groups of people or sharing my story, anything that helps the others, you know, when they're experiencing challenges. And so this is a great opportunity to practice those skills and hopefully in the future when my book is completed, you know, I can use that too as a tool to help others. That's right. You know, we, I should introduce you to Angel Tessie because she, her program is designed to help you finish the book, get it published, make it a bestseller, and then actually monetize it. So it, it creates income and that's what she does. I mean, she'd be a great person for you to meet because she holds you accountable. She gives you an outline. You know, it's it's really fantastic. And uh, I can envision you rolling out onto the stage at TEDx someday, talking about your book and your you know multi million dollar business that you've helped build and and everything. I look forward to that day because I'm sure it's going to come. Me too. I look forward to that day as well. I would love to speak. You know, that's. Wow, gosh, that's a big dream, but I would love, love to see it happen. I, I purchased her um, course, you know, a course of classes for how to publish a book on Amazon. Good, good. Um, which was helpful, but not quite there yet, but I'll go back and watch again when I get to the publishing, but I would definitely love to meet her. Well, I know we, I'll set up a meeting between the two of you because she, I think she could be a real mentor for you as well. She's, she's the pro. She's helped, she's published, I think like, I don't know, 25 books herself and has helped others publish dozens and dozens of books. And, but she knows how to make them bestsellers as well. And so anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Jill, you're my hero. Thanks for being here. <laughs> it is good to be here. All righty. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening, everybody. And, uh, checking us out here on YouTube. We, uh, we always say you get the behind the scenes and in between stuff on the YouTube, but you miss out on the ads from uh, the radio show, but that's okay. You know, you'll get the rest of it. If you want to go back and listen to that too, it's uh, usually edited and the sound's a little bit better and so forth, but you do miss out on the in between stuff. So we'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Love you, Jill. Bye. Okay. See you. Bye.